Ooh, what is up you guys and welcome to the MMBA. Yeah, another league. Yay. <laughs> I'm doing a quick team analysis here since it's my third league I am in um, in a very short time span. But I do want to introduce the team before I go into the battle. The battle is going to be included in this video, but being you know pushed ahead clearly. Um for my team draft, I actually decided to since this is based on the smoke on tiers to some extent. Um, basically, you get three picks in OU, three UU, RU, and you know West followed. So with that in mind, I really, really, since I got in such a bad spot, I just wanted a high tier wall breaker. So I actually decided to get Latios really good here. Uh, I decided to follow that up with Mega Scissor just to get my Dragon Steel Core, and then I actually grabbed Zapdos for my third pick because Zapdos has been showing more and more on other leagues. I should be saying because I'm using myself uh, that it's able to defensively check a lot of Pokemon that could offensively maneuver in most certainly Generation 7 where I think it got pushed into a position where it's able to outspeed very very common wall breaker and stall them out by Ruse changing their typing plus Heatwave and Thunderbolt are one of the best combinations in the game and just Defog and stuff like that really does make Zapdos one of my favorite Pokemon uh, in OU at the moment, and I really want to showcase that in a league concept. Uh, for my UU, I actually was one of the ones to go in first, so I grabbed myself an Infernape, who really wanted to try that out for quite some time, and haven't been able to grab one like ever, uh, because it's so common, it's so good, uh, so having a chance of pulling that off and using that, yeah, pretty darn awesome. I followed that up actually by capitalizing on Nidoking, because I wanted something with Stealth Rocks and Toxic Spikes reliably, and Nidoking King was just that. Uh, also, should be stated here, Nidoking Nidor King is, has a strong maneuverability, and um, I just really want to try it out in this concept, because it's, it's probably one of the best wall breakers in the league, and I think I could be capitalized on that Pokemon fairly easily. Uh, my last pick was Suqune, um, Bulky Water, um, Crocune is a Pokemon I hate to be dealing with, so the concept here was basically that if I struggle with it, maybe others do too, hence therefore I got it. Uh, so really looking forward to using that Pokemon also. Uh, when it comes to RU, things start to melt together, but a lot of Pokemon is in RU that fought, that really was in NU or even PU, so definitely felt that there was some maneuverability there that needed to be made. However, I think I got things adjusted in a way that I prefer. So first and foremost, the first Pokemon I brought or taught was actually Jolteon there first. Uh, no, I actually got Sneasel and Jolteon. None of them made the team because of the adjustment I was forced to make because I didn't get Rhyperior. I wanted Rhyperior, didn't get that. So my first pick eventually by default would be Frostlass. Spikes. Clearly, you know, Taunt, um, Ice, and Shadow, I was going to say Ice, but it goes really, really strong combination. Um, there is really nothing to it. It's a very good overall Pokemon. The next one here was Verision. I, I would say a good Grass type. Um, definitely isn't as effective as a Fighting type, though it's usable as it. But um, I used it in a previous season with some success. Uh, though I did lose twice to a Speeter versus Keldeo, which was the reason I didn't make uh, the finals eventually, but yeah. Uh, that said though, you know, Verision is fairly good. I think it's hard to adjust to, and uh, I really want to just showcase that again. It's a very good Pokemon in this concept. And I'm clearly joining. Um, the last Pokemon I brought was actually, or picked, was Ribambi. Um, very strong speed to 124. It's a fairy type, uh, and I always realize when I picked Scissor for leagues uh, that it resolves what Steel types does and it does that really well. It doesn't solve what Bug types do. Uh, so with that in mind, I wanted a real Bug type, um, and it's just what it brings: Bug Buzz, Moon Blast, you know, all of that stuff, and Stick Whip. Ribambi and Neo King is probably one of the scariest combination I can think of. And since Ribambi is, um, it has been deemed probably the strongest um, sticker Weber in OU, capitalize on that, yeah, it's kind of nice. It definitely is probably the wrong word to use, but to be completely honest, it's a Pokemon that I feel are doing well no matter what necessarily happens. Um, 
When it comes to the NU, I was a bit shifted here. As you guys see, there is a barbell, barbell, barbell on the picture. I actually changed that to Rhydon eventually, so I'm going to redo this picture. But um, Rhydon, rock type, basically needed. Uh, since they didn't get Rhyperior, uh, Barbarical was actually the one I bought. I actually picked Ry Rhydon first, then I dropped Rhydon for Barbarical, then dropped Barbarical for Rhydon. So I lose, I all used two changes. Basically, the reason I decided to not keep Barbarical was it isn't filling a defensive role I need, hence I need to get rid of it, and I feel it's unfortunate. Uh, next one was Kangaskhan. It's a Pokemon that can pass wishes. Um, it's not too threatened by Ghost type due to Scrafty. So overall, I think it resolved an issue that I'm probably started to build uh, with you know not having too many defensive Pokemon to actually capitalize on that. And I think Gustlord feels the last word where all it really does is make sure that there are no ghost or psychic types that necessarily can spam their stab moves to be able to get momentum. Gustlord is defensively very, very, very good. With Assault Vest, it's really hard to be dealing with. And while there are physical threats towards a Gustlord that takes it out, there aren't that many special variants that deals with Gustlord in a fashion I would say are good. So Gustlord fills a niche for the team. It isn't a Pokemon that is, I would say, usable to the highest ground. It's definitely going to fill the void for checks that I think is going to come in. But it's at the same time just as reliable as anything else. But overall, I'm fairly happy with this team. I don't think there's anything really standing out. I have a strong speed here. I have a good variety of stabs. And uh, if I was going to pinpoint an issue I have, I would say that Ice Spam is something that always going to be an issue for every team. Um, I do believe, um, I think I have 7 weak to ice, but also 3 that resisted, and um, none of the ones that resisted are bolt beam weak, so I'm not too scared of it, but it's always a thing to watch out for. I'm also not mamma weak, but since mamma swine didn't get drafted because it was OU for some reason, um, I'm, I'm not necessarily too scared about that. Uh, so with that said, let's go in actually to the potential battle. Uh, now, let's see if I actually can move this picture away. Hey, I could. We're facing against Happy. Um, I should probably do like this instead. So you guys can see my side there too. Uh, probably not the best design here, but we're going up against a team there, which I didn't feel was too threatening. Uh, we have Landers, Dayenshi, Circuitry, Necrozma, Kubilion, Kurim, uh, Hitman Top, Incineroar, Zeismetod, Haunter, Liveny, and Audino. Uh, overall, I say the thing that stands out the most here for me is, um, well, to be honest, the, our Pokemon here that deals with um, um, any type of his OU Pokemon fairly well. Um, Lander's T is probably the one I think is going to be the most threatening. Um, I don't expect Mega Dayenshi for this battle, mainly because I have a Mega Scissor. Kinda, kinda scares those type of Pokemon away, uh, and and Zapdos overall really does very, very, very well. Uh, I'll say Necrozma is probably the only Pokemon that I don't deal with too well, but uh, overall I feel I should be able to capitalize on that. I decided to bring a team that um, could capitalize on a few aspects. Uh, first and foremost, I have a Scarlet Latios. Uh, Draco is something that I expect to be. Uh, using really well versus this, mainly because um, since I don't expect Mega DNG, I could I potentially just spam Draco as much as I want to. Uh, Mega Scissor is making it, and it is a safeguard against Necrozma and Mega DNG if they make it. Also, Cabalion can't deal with it, it is going to be defensive, so basically uh, I shouldn't have to worry, and also kind of keeps away Curem too. Um, Zapdos, of course. Um, <laughs> he's here. Uh, the only thing I see that he has for um, Zapdos is Seismitoad, and since Seismitoad is not an initial threat, uh, I'm not too worried there either, and just Discharge and Static are something that uh, I think I could use well versus this. Um, another thing that was in Infernape with uh, actually Grass Knot, Grass C, then Dual Stab and U-Turn, it, it, so it's not scarfed, it does really well against anything he wants to bring, and it's a good sack play, does massive damage easily. Uh, Nidoking has Stealth Rocks, Dual Stab, and Ice Beam. 
Um, and my last Pokemon here is actually Rubombi, which is modest Scarf because I've speed everything in his team anyway, uh, even if they're Scarf, barring the energy, which never could be Scarfed. Actually, I do tie, I do believe, with Cobalion would be a modest. Um, set there is Moonblast, Bug Bus, and um, let's see, I think it was Energy Ball, and then Stick Web. Stick Web is there basically. If I'm gonna fall, at least I fall in such a way where Nidoking potentially could take over. So, yeah, with all this in mind, let's see what he brought. So, yeah, um, I'll definitely say this. I didn't expect Liberty. Um, it felt like a Pokemon that was redundant. Seismitoad makes sense. Uh, and we don't seem to get the energy. I feel that initial feeling was right. Uh, other than that, you see my pointer here on the screen, I think. You cannot. Huh, how about that? Uh, Incineroar is going to be interesting. Seismitoad, uh, as expected, and Circuitry. I feel it could be Scarves. It's something I'm fearing. Uh, Scarves circuitry, while it doesn't do a massive amount of damage towards my team, it still is an issue. And um, Nano King is, of course, not fully speed, uh, which means that um, it could potentially outspeed that. But overall, I feel I should do well here. Um, as long as Seismos were dealt with, I think Sap of those could potentially just shake the team overall. And, you know, anything, any Scarver he wants to bring. Rebombi and Latios can take them out. And since I can do too, him not bringing me the energy, I can spam Draco, which is going to be important. And of course, it doesn't necessarily have anything for Moonblast. I do hit everything at least neutral with that. So with that said, let's see how this went. So he leads up with Cobalion. So I was fearing potential rocks here. So Zapdos is a fair lead. I'll actually go for um, Discharge here over... Uh, heat wave just to get the paralyzation and not to worry about the um, potential of him, you know, being scarred or you know, basically nerfing him. As uh, he switches out to his Gorgon, his size method, I go for defog clearly. I'm not gonna stay in here, I don't see the point. I'm pretty much walled out basically. As uh, he goes for toxic, which is fine, uh, it's unfortunate, but you know, we'll deal with that. I'll go ahead directly for a Draco, as uh, I get to showcase, or he gets to showcase that he's actually sub Seismitoad. So that's really scary, but he also has a really, really dead Seismitoad at this point, since he didn't necessarily like that nuke at all. So since he's behind the sub, I expect him to try to stay in, and goes for Skull. Um, my shield does prevent me from getting burned, and I think he forgot about Bug Bus or Sarmu do pass through subs. So we get Seismitoad out of the way really directly, and at this point, all I really need to do is keep Zapdos safe. So, in Cinderor comes in, I actually switched out. I expect to go for Flare Blitz uh, as I bring in my Cinderor or my Infernape, but uh, he actually go for a U turn. And this is not good. And the way you brought that in, Lelando, I'm expecting this to be Scarfed. As I go for Stone Edge, my Reduction Barrier will kick in. Uh, this shows me that he's Adamant Scarfed, so that could be a potential issue, as uh, this will confirm that he's Scarfed the way he brought it in. Um, I'm basically gonna <laughs> just go with it as a probably a bit of misplay. I go for Ice Beam over what I was feeling was a better play was what Earth Power or Stealth Rocks. So I missed out on that one. So I go in directly to Infernape as it goes for a knockoff. That's quite alright since, of course, you know, resisted and I have a C move. Now, here's the thing I went for Flareless, predicting him to switch out. He's actually going for a U turn against my face. Close Comet Oko's that Incineroar, so definitely a high risk place as Mustache comes in again. Now, I wasn't feeling comfortable with what are we going to lock himself into as it goes for an earthquake, which is great. That means the Saptos can come in and roost. Um, or, I, I mean, I went for Logos, clearly. Uh, probably just to go for Psyche, if I remember correctly. No, I went for a Draco. I'm pretty sure about that. No, I double switch. Hail, I'm trying to remember this game. Expecting the Incineroar so I could roost freely. Sorry about that. Hail, I was, I was in the zone when I played this game. So I went for a fair ruse as he went for Thunder Punch, which I felt was actually surprising. And uh, I'll go for Discharge here. He is clearly a Salt Vest as uh, he will retaliate with a U turn, which is quite right. Now, he actually brings in the Moustache yet again. Now, I have no reason to switch out necessarily, so I actually went for a ruse here just to kind of scout what he wanted to lock himself into. Since uh, Stone Edge is a 2 hit kill, however. I, since it's scarred, I can just see what he locks himself into. So he actually went for a knockout predicting my Nidoking, King. And as you guys saw, the static kicked in and uh, he got paralyzed. So we are nerfing him pretty badly. And uh, Mustache comes back again. And at this point, due to him being paralyzed, I have no reason to be fearing him. 
As you go for Stone Edge, that's okay, you know, it's doing 67%, it's definitely up there. But I can go for a Ruse, next time Stone Edge hits me, it doesn't do that bad of a damage. I can just kind of wall him out here, and I think he realizes that. So eventually, if he doesn't score a crit on me, I will I will win this matchup. I have no reason to you know fear this situation at all, to be completely honest. As I just basically wait for him to miss a Stone Edge or people to be, of course, away with. Now... I think he realizes that as I actually went for Discharge, that was probably the wrong move. So I'm going to go for a Heat Wave here. Uh, the thing is here, I do not want to go a Heat Wave against the Liberty because I expect him to be in the Focus Session never. And since I missed out on getting Stealth Rocks on the field, I I'm kind of in spot. Now he goes to Greased Lightning. And I, like I said here, I expected him to be Scarfed here. And even if he logs out of Dazzling Gleam, he potentially couldn't kill my Latios. Luckily for me, he goes for Energy Ball, expecting probably anything else but... And most likely Nino King. Uh, so I'll go for a Psychic here as he goes actually for a Sea Electric Terrain. As, while that's cool, it doesn't matter because since we are Scarf, we are speeding this Pokemon anyway. So it just free falls there. And at this point, yeah, you guys are seeing the same thing I do. We are looking upon to actually grab in a potential 6 0 here as he goes Beastie Rose um, or be Betsy Ross. So I don't know. Uh, he goes for Sick Wave, that's okay. Um, I'm getting a feeling there is no reason for me to switch out anymore anyway. But I'll actually go for a Defog here in case I'm forced to, because I don't feel comfortable with it. And I definitely don't want my Rebombi, since it potentially ties with Cobalion, to be put in a spot. Now he'll keep going for Sick Wave, which I felt was quite right. And as you guys see, I went for Discharge just because of the potential Sash. I can go for Defog till he gets fully paralyzed. There is no reason for me of doing any other play but that. And I actually went for Gruz just in case Lano comes in. Because it did 69%. They could definitely do around 70 if I'm unlucky. And of course, you know, always the risk of potential um, critical hits. So if I eventually get the fully paralyzations, I can just take him out. And um, he's going to bring Lando. Lando easily died to Heatwave. And unless he scores a crit on me, it's going to fall. And since it's paralyzed, you know. I cleared off speed already, so I don't have to worry about that. His last Pokemon is the Cobalion. It also easily died to a Heat Wave. Um, and I think I went for a Heat Wave. Yeah, I think I just wrapped the game up from there. And we win this game 6 0. Though it is a long game, and I don't believe the 6 0 necessarily uh, say how good or bad this game was. The Devil Feels 6 0 is a testament of out outclassing someone. I don't believe I did that. I just got my defensive checking right, and I think my opponent really struggled to deal with being defensively checked. Zapdos was my only defensive Pokemon to this game. Um, Scissor, to some extent, was defensive, but was um, not necessarily, I would say, important for the game because it wasn't that type of defensive checking I needed. Uh, now I'm, I'm most certain I would have won this game no matter what he, my opponent, brought. It has nothing to do with my opponent's skill, it has to do with the matchup. There was just, he had to go out of his way by a lot to make sure to win this game. And I don't believe he had the team to do that, I simply do not. Um, me winning 6 I stated, I don't believe it reflects the game itself. But I definitely feel I have the upper hand from the get-go. And I think the result really speaks for itself. I didn't need to maneuver... My, myself in such a way that made it hard for me to win this game. Um, I definitely had a defensive checking and I just went with that through and through. The few times I needed to play offensive, it worked because his offensive threats wasn't offensively as capable as my offensive threats. So it basically became, he tried to get it upper hand and I just pushed him aside. Definitely feel that with the circuit heal audio situation. And also him losing the Seismator clearly was the worst play of all, I think, for him. I think once that happened, there was no way of him really doing anything to us after that was, as you guys saw. The result speaks for that itself. So, with that, guys, thank you, of course, all for watching. And, yeah, follow us on this league. Go into probably a lot of showdown showcase with that. So, keep that in mind. So, as always, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.